Greetings, earthlings, wisdom keepers, wisdom seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the Leo full moon happening on January 28th of 2021 for all 12 signs, like how to interpret this in your chart. If you have not seen this um, video I just did on just explaining the moon itself, please do check it out. It's a rather lengthy in-depth view. And this, this full moon is like the most intense moon I've seen in a while. Okay. There is nothing but red lines with exception of one blue line, one little sextile going on. Okay. Um, Venus is, is sextiling um, in a conjunction with Pluto, of course, Neptune. We're going to look at the chart in a second. And that's our only saving grace. So this video though, is to help for everybody who's already watched that video, contextualize what this new beginning and ending phase that you're in of this lunation, this culmination period, where are you experiencing this in your life? And I'm going to show you how to look at that for yourself. And we're going to fly through the 12 signs and just kind of put this stuff on a house um, system. You know what I'm saying? And so let's do that. Let's do that right now. And while I'm setting that up, a couple, a couple of announcements. If you're new to this channel and you resonate with my content, welcome. My name is Tanya. Hello, hello. We put out videos every single day of the week and it's free to you for now. So all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell to tick a notification thing. And it'll be like, oh my God, it's an upload. Let me watch it. Thanks to everybody who's been here forever. Welcome. Hello. You're awesome. Goddesses and gods of the interwebs. Y'all are the shiznit. Um, and now today we are talking in this session about how to put this up on your axis of your chart. So um, starting with cancer, because that's what the screen currently says, where is this intense lunation um, going on for you? And what areas of life can you expect intense psychological interpersonal conflict cancer? You can expect this within your second house, okay, and I use whole sign for these in case people are curious, your second house and your uh, eighth house. So this is your second eighth house axis. So there's going to be something with resources there, your resources, other people's resources. That's where that shadow aspect is going to be coming up for y'all. And the same can be said for Capricorns. So if you are a Cancer or a Capricorn, your second and eighth house axis is influenced by this tension. If you are a Cancer, this is going to be remediated, okay? This whole energy is going to be remediated through the process of your 11th house, which is how do you connect with networks? How do you connect with larger groups of people? How do you use internet as your form of community? Something to do with your larger groups that you're a part of or social um, organizations that you are associated with, like networks and so forth and so on. Also, like it's something to do with your long-term goals, possibly and dreams for your life, because that's the 11th house. And that's the solution to all your problems. Uh, at this time, to put it in the most simple, crude, like flying through these zodiac signs way possible, Cancer. If you are a Capricorn, the solution there is going to be in your fifth house, which is Taurus here. So the solution to this T-square is your fifth house. So your passion projects, your creations, okay, that is going to be the solution if you are a Capricorn. If you have children, the solution is going to be found through your children if you are a Capricorn, okay, if you're reading for that energy. Now, um, what I will say is that things are intense right now and solutions can come in very different forms of energy. So just be aware that solutions can sometimes feel like the actual issue, okay? Um, that reset, and I didn't want it to reset, but we're going to look next at the next aspect, okay? And that's going to be uh, the next sign. That's going to be for Leos, if I can get it to um, work for us here. Um, so yeah, okay, whatever. I guess I skipped ahead too much. I just like totally went and did that on my own. I apologize. My whole, my whole approach was just, it was cattywampus. We're going to put, <laughs> uh, Leo on the ascendant. So if you're a Leo ascendant sun or moon, you are having a very intense experience. My friend, this is your first house, baby. You got this moon in that first house. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. This is your first and seventh house. So if you're a Leo out there or an Aquarius, this is your relationships. Your whole concept of relationship and union and partnership is going through a tremendous shake. This is like an earthquake to your relationships and to your sense of self if you are a Leo or an Aquarius, okay? 
So make sure that you are strong in who you are going into this energy. Y'all are about to go into some type of like psychological, um, interpersonal battle, just saying with this opposition line and the resolution, don't worry, don't worry. I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. If you are a Leo, the solution, the resolution is in your career because this is your 10th house by whole sign if Leo is on the ascendant, right? So um, your career and your legacy, like not just your immediate job, Leo, your career, the long view of your, what you're doing for a job, Leo, if that's you, or what you're building in the world and what you're leaving behind. Um, when you leave the physical, what's left behind, that's your 10th house. So if you're a Leo out there and you are like looking at how do I resolve this intense ass energy, look to your career and look to the truths that are showing their heads right now in your life in reference to your legacy. Now, if you are a Aquarius watching this, you are going to look to your fourth house for the solutions because this is your fourth house in Taurus by whole sign. So you're going to look to the home. You're going to look to your roots. You're going to look to where you grew up. You're going to look to your foundation. You're going to look to whoever and whatever is your anchor, your most private point. If you are an Aquarius, okay, you're going to look at where your root is. Where do we, where, yo, you're a ship. And at the end of the day, your ship needs to stop. Okay. And at the end of the day, how do you stop a ship? You throw a freaking anchor over the edge. You feel, so the fourth house is your anchor. If you are an Aquarius, you need to look at your anchor point, so to speak. Where do you fall back into at the end of the day? Where do you go into rest? Where do you go into retreat? Where is your private place? If you are an Aquarius, trust and believe your awakenings and epiphanies will come through those places and you will be eased by anything happening by pursuing those environments. Just saying, just saying. Unless and or, you know, there might be a more intense experience of that. I'm not going to lie because these are the two most volatile malefics. It ain't going to be all cushy and sunshines and butterflies, but that's how you're going to get through it. Okay. Okay. That's so interesting. I love looking at this for all the different signs because it's just so telling. You know what I mean? Now, if you're a Virgo or a Pisces, this is your little section. So um, Virgo on the Ascendant, you're going to be looking at this from like a perspective of, hey, this tension axis is my 12th house and my 6th house. Damn, that's a very dangerous axis. I am not going to front. If you're a Virgo, you already are prone to worrying because you're a mutable sign and you're Earth. Don't. Don't worry, Virgo. I'm going to challenge you. Be a Virgo. Get on your A game. Do what you need to do. Virgo's got lists and you and I both know that if you are Virgo watching this, you got a list about what you are supposed to be doing to help this health situation. The sixth house is the, the physical health. The 12th house is the mental and spiritual health. This is the health axis and the disease axis. Okay. Okay. Just the sixth house, trust me, is the joy of, of uh, Mars. Look it up. The 12th house is the joy of Saturn. Look it up. These are not awesome, auspicious, happy, hoo-hoo, rah-rah houses. Virgo, do not F around with your health. Get on your A game. Eat clean. Eat right. Don't mess around this week, Virgo. Take your vitamins. Okay, Virgo, I'm serious. Take your vitamins. And how are you going to solve this? How are you going to solve this tense energy besides being on your A game with your health? Because health, because we know the sixth house and the twelfth house is like all sorts of type of like decline in health and your immune system. Look to your ninth house, your belief systems. If you're in uni or school or whatever, go to your school environment and retreat if you're a Virgo. If you're a Virgo, look at your belief systems against the world and analyze them and, and go into that and experience that and just philosophically exist there. You know what I'm saying? And take some type of pleasure, Virgo. You'll know what it is in reference to like other cultures and how they treat the earth. That's a real niche topic. I would almost like prescribe you to research. Like if you're a Virgo out there, Ascendant Sun or Moon, go research Mother Earth and dope things that other cultures, Ninth House, do in reference to Mother Earth or even farming with Taurus there because, you know, that's conservation and farming. Just the thought, that's the solution. On the flip side, literally, if you are a Pisces, Ascendant Sun or Moon, then the solution amidst your 12th house, 6th house, terrible, oh yeah, duh, if you're a Pisces, you need to take care of your health is the same exact thing I was trying to mention to you. This is your 6th house. Okay, and your 12th house. Pisces and Virgos, watch out for your health. If you're a Pisces, you need to do everything I told Virgo. Be on your A-game with your health, Pisces. Take care of yourself. This is not a joke. Um, I'm thinking of a Pisces right now. I need to make sure I make sure I tell this to, you know what I'm saying, or point out this video because the moon, ascendant, sun, read it all. Read it all. You know, definitely read the ascendant and definitely read uh, the moon, you know, and, the, and, the, and I, a lot of people dismiss the moon and the moon's one's embodiment, you know, you want to 
dismiss it, but it's also your soul. It's all the things. And the sun is the Western thing. It's the plot line. Yeah, read that too, but especially the ascendant. If you're going to look at one sign, read for your ascendant, okay? But for real though, um, you know, Pisces, take care of yourself, please. The solution for you is your third house. You need to communicate. If you're a Pisces, you need to communicate. Again, I'm thinking of a particular Pisces and I'm laughing inside, you know, very scorpionic laugh, but I am. Um, you need to focus in Pisces on communicating your truth, expressing your truth. And trust and believe you are bound Pisces to more likely than not be volatile in some way, shape or form. I'm not judging you Pisces girl, boy, I am not judging you in your communications. If you're a Pisces, you are likely to explode in your communications right about now, you know? So, um, trust and believe that you are going to experience a purge and an opportunity to go full-fledged super scion mode Pisces in reference to your communications with people and others during this time. So um, how do you get around that and, and not explode on people? Just speak your truth. Mars is the activation planet. Uranus is the truth planet, the awakener planet. Speak your truth and remain firm because you are being called to. I don't know what beef you got with people's Pisces, but it's something. I'm looking at this like, damn, Pisces got to get something off their chest. This is your third house. You have to speak your truth. Also, if you're a business owner, Pisces, the third house in ancient astrology is actually known to be the house of, of the goddess and associated with business. So if you're a Pisces with a small business, congratulations, you're gonna have so much energy to propel into it. It's not even a joke with the third house being activated with these super volatile, high energy, like um, vibes of this. It's just so intense. So, you know, pay attention to that. If you are a Libra and you are, um, let us move the chart forward. Usually I don't, let me know if you like this. Usually I just talk about it and make you think about what I'm on, but um, like when I talk about the signs, but anyway, now I'm showing you today. So let me know if you like that. A lot of astrologers do that. I noticed, so I was like, well, I can do that. So anyway, um, the ascendant is Libra now, right? And if we're looking at the, uh, the Aries Libra axis, this is for you. So um, if you are a Libra out there or an Aries, then trust and believe this is going to be a new uh, kind of exposure event of volatility birthing through your 11th house, okay? This is the 11th house of Libra. This is the 11th house of Aries and uh, your fifth house. So your fifth house, 11th house axis, in other words, if you are an Aries or a Libra, ascendant sun or moon is lit up like a very intense kind of like evil volatile Christmas tree <laughs> from like hell, but there's a positive outcome. And that's your, if you're an Aries, um, your finances. And if you're a Libra, like how you channel it, that is. And if you're a Libra, you should channel it through other people's finances because it's your eighth house and other people's resources. Um, and it's going to be an epiphany moment around there and a truth telling moment around there. And um Basically, you're going to come to some solid conclusions is how I'm interpreting this because Taurus is solid and it's going to be in reference if you're a Libra to how other people relate with things and how other people's resources are uh, valued in your life and other life and how other people in your life have, uh, you know, influenced your perception around other people's resources. You can have an experience of inheritances even in your life if you're a Libra that goes sour in some way, shape or form because of that eighth house explosive energy. And if you're an Aries, it could be something related to what you personally possess or own because the second house is what you own. Mm. Kombucha time, sweet tart. Mm. You ever have something so astringent and it's just like, oh, that's so good. And then it messes up your, you're like, damn, I almost choked on it because it was so like tart, but it's good. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Venus ruled Libra. I got something to tell you that other people's resources stuff is going to be like intense. So watch out for that because that's the eighth house. And the eighth house is also a more malefic house or not so great, like easy house. So just be aware. that it can be at a cost or at some type of inconvenience. <coughs> Woo, sorry about that. 
Um, so just be aware of that. And also like resources, if you're an Aries, it's your resources. Um, so just be aware of where you're investing things. Don't be impulsive, Aries, for the love of goddess. Don't be impulsive about how you spend right now. You will regret it. But if you're coming to some realization terms about how you need to spend that money or invest that money, that is a great epiphany moment to experience if you're an Aries or Libra at this point in time. So the solution for you, Aries, is related to your financial um, money that you own. And then the solution for you, Libra, is uh, other people's resources in some way, shape, or form. And it could be, again, just an epiphany through those means about whether you need to spend something or how you interpret other people's interpretation of other people's resources or how your other your resources are invested in other people in some way, shape, or form, Libra. That's something to think about too. Um, very interesting volatility there though, as I keep mentioning in the eighth house is a very challenging place because it's like, uh, you know, it's related to death. And so there's probably some type of death going on here and endings in this larger scene. Now, if you are a Scorpio, let us go ahead. If you're a Scorpio or a Taurus and pretty soon we're going to be done with the whole axis. I think we have, um, yeah, like one more after this. So anyway, if you are a, oops, I didn't actually, sorry about that, my fault. I didn't uh, get it into Scorpio. So here's the Scorpio ascendant version of this. So if you are a Scorpio ascendant sun or moon or a Taurus ascendant sun or moon, um, this, wait, I didn't talk about that. No, I didn't, but now this is really interesting. So um, you are basically Scorpio gonna be experiencing a hell of a lot of intensity. Oh my goddess. In relationship to your relationships because the seventh house is taurus and this volatile super insane kind of like whoa energy right here is going to definitely be in your uh seventh house and that's all about like other people but that is the point for you if you're a scorpio the point for you and the way out of this tension and also the takeaway of this tension scorpio is so that you can come to some conclusions about your partnerships you can come to some conclusions scorpio about your relationship with people or with a person in general okay so the seventh house is definitely where stuff is going down and stuff is also coming to light for you to fully comprehend and understand, okay? So just know that the deeper truths in terms of your relationships, business partnerships, soul contracts, whatever, whatever that you have with other people is most definitely going through a massive awakening epiphany status. And it's through tense ass means in relationship to home and your legacy. And so it's like your, your family even accesses here, like where you came from, your roots, the fourth house. I talked about that earlier for another sign and your long-term legacy. Like what is you building out in the world? Okay. Your, your uh, 10th house um, there with Leo. That's something there is coming to a conclusion with your, you, with what you're known or how you're known in the world. If you're known as so-and-so's child, or if you're known as this, that job that you do, something about that is coming to an end and a fruition. Okay. And something about your home environment and where you're from and your roots is going through a redefinition phase. And you're putting words to that like you've never been able to put words to that before because your third house, if you're a Scorpio, is where this Capricorn hosted uh, Pluto Venus conjunction is taking place. And third house corresponds Scorpio with how you communicate. So you, Scorpio, are getting very deep into how you're putting words to what is getting redefined because Saturn rules Capricorn. So you're putting words, third house, okay, conjunction, uh, to the depth of the psychological reality that is your uh, Aquarius Saturn sign. That is always you. And that is your fourth house root. So there's some deep purging and deep transformation for Scorpio people in particular. And the solution against Scorpio, it might be cutting. Uranus is a cover, is a cutter, and uh, you know Mars is a severer. So these are really uh, omens for endings and severances of people who are not in your best interest and maybe people who are volatile towards you even Scorpio because you have that Mars Uranus conjunction of volatility in the seventh house. So just if you're a Scorpio and you know you got some low vibe motherfuckers that'd be explosive and whatnot, let them go, let it go, detach, remove, eliminate, eliminate. Be careful not to get freaked the fuck out on, yo, for real. If you're a Scorpio, because I know y'all can go super hardcore too, but just be aware there might be public enemies at this point in time. 
The seventh house is public enemies. Interestingly enough, people don't talk about that a lot in astrology, do they? Now you know. If you don't know, now you know. The seventh house is public ass enemies. So if you're a Scorpio, be aware. That could happen. Okay, I'm just saying. Now we spent a lot of time on Scorps. Let's go to Taurus. Hello, Taurus. If you're a Taurus, the solution for you is you. How easy is that? Not, but it is and it isn't at the same time. You know what I mean, Taurus, because if you're a Taurus, that's your first house. You are the apex. You are the solution. Now, Taurus, you might feel like you are the referee right now between a couple groups of people, between two people in, in particular, between two different causes, two different things that are just like opposing each other. And you are suddenly like the peacemaker or the in-between or the mediator. If you are a Taurus, if you are a Taurus, you're probably holding things down for other people right now in deep ways that you don't even realize where you're helping people come through epiphany moments because this Mars Uranus conjunction, I cannot say enough y'all is epiphany moments. You know what I'm saying? It's epiphany moments. So just know that you are coming into some personal epiphany moments for yourself, Taurus for yourself okay so you as a first house influence being the solution is you if you're a taurus so be aware that like you are going through self-definition and awakening i see this is all the tauruses out there please stand up no but for real though all the tauruses out there you are going to be going through a sense of self-awakening of your own entity your own being your own vibe like you have never before and you're going to see yourself taurus mark my words i want to hear back from y'all mark my words you are going to see yourself differently through means of remediating through means of refereeing through means of being the liaison the bridge point between two otherwise very tense opposing forces okay in your life so if there's two people fighting in your life or there's two different forces playing out in your life like it's star wars up in here you are the mediator of something okay between the two forces so know that going into this jedi you know what i'm saying because you're the, the in-between okay beautiful now moving on i think that was really good for the kind of taurus vibe last but not least if you are a sagittarius or a gemini ascendant sun or moon then um this is for you and basically, um, with that said, this is happening in your ninth house, third house axis for y'all, if you are a Gemini or a Sag, okay? Um, and that's going to be pretty damn intense because um, it's a great way of intensity, I think, in one light. This is your communications, okay? If you are a um, Sagittarius, this is your third house uh, with the sun. And if you are Virgo, this is your third house with the moon. So you're going to be communicating something very intense, and no matter who you are between the signs of Sagittarius and Gemini. Something is very intense about your communications in reference to your belief systems and how you see the world, how you see and perceive the world. If you are a Gemini, or you are uh, a, a, a Sagittarius, how you see and perceive the world is going to be going up, butting against heads with how you want to communicate. How you want to communicate might feel like you can't actually communicate what you believe, or how, what you want to communicate, you might feel is going to cause a stir up in your environment that you're in when you talk to other people. So just be aware that like whatever you do say, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. It might cause some explosive volatile things or you might end up being like a really volatile force in somebody's life without even meaning it if you are a Sagittarius or a Gemini at this point in time and you know you're extra charged up for the next like year basically because the act not yeah like the next year or so because the axes are in y'all sign now it got out of Cancer and Capricorn the North Node South Node so the North Node's now in Gemini the South Node's now in Sagittarius. So y'all are like the karmic superstars of what's going down for the next several months. Okay. In other words, with the nodes of the moon transiting y'all signs. So just know that. Now, if you are a Sagittarius, the solution to the super intense communication and philosophical, like what is going on is going to exist through that Taurus means through that um, sixth house. So Sagittarius is sixth house is a health house or a disease house. So if it's it, if it ain't taken care of, it's a disease house. So please take care of yourself. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told Pisces and Virgo. Take care of yourself, please. Take care of yourself. Uh, use your good nutrition. Sixth house is nutrition. Eat healthfully, and that will help support you. Take your herbal supplements that you know support you, Sagittarius, and you're gonna be just fine. And you might find you're extra motivated to even get more into that stuff anyway, because all that energy is in your sixth 
house. Okay, okay. Now, Gemini's, the solution for you is spiritual. You need to go within, my friends. Gemini, I know y'all are like out there like oh, eye roll. Like not only did Tanya put us last, what the heck, but she's going to tell me a Gemini, the most mentally stimulated being out here to go within. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of Gemini's, I was reading on Reddit, like in the forums, a lot of Gemini's are like feeling like this sense of not being able to talk and not being able to express their truth, not being able to be with themselves because they're like social and whatnot, da, da, da. but more than that, y'all's everything's been going on your mercury is your ruling planet and it's in aquarius still which is saturn ruled wait till mercury goes into pisces i think all y'all are going to be feeling better gemini just saying just saying little nugget for you preview coming attractions as they say but um all that to say your solution is 12th house go spiritual gemini go meditative mode gemini if you are a Gemini and you're sitting there like, I cannot meditate, you are the goofiest woman in the world for suggesting that. And I've, I've talked to many of y'all as so might be able to, to determine from that. Listen to binaural beats. Listen to binaural beats. Listen to guided meditations. Let somebody talk you, Gemini. Let somebody talk you through the process. And that's going to be so much easier if you do that, Gemini, to focus on that. So go spiritual 12th house, go retreat mode alone with yourself. You're probably like, yeah, I don't need any more of that. But really though, reflect in privacy of your subconscious, if you will. Allow yourself to just sit and be with yourself for a minute, Gemini. That's what I want you to think about doing. That's what's going to help you, Gemini, alleviate all of the shiza that is this T-square that has some divine purpose at the end of the day. Damn. Hot damn and a vegan cruelty-free hamburger too. Like that was a lot. Can we just say, whoa, Whew. deep breath. <sighs> yeah. With that said, I know this video brought you value. If you're still here, so hit that like button so that more people can get it for free. Subscribe if you're not already and you resonate with this content. And with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.